I'm back on another issue, and, and it's the issue of racism, and particularly as it pertains to sport. And uh, I bring it up because, indeed, Nadia Power, the Irish athlete, recently asked us all to continue the conversation on racism. And we do need to continue it in an appropriate and, and a positive way. And honestly, that's the only way we're really going to get to make a difference, I think, to the various ways that people of colour, people from ethnic minorities experience racism on a regular basis in Ireland and in the sporting realms as well. And we have to keep it on the agenda and we have to keep the, the discussion going in every sector. And I just want to raise a few examples of, of what's happened to some young people. Uh, Leo Gax, a, a Kerryman, and now a young professional footballer was told to go back to your own country while he was training in Trilly during the early weeks of the COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, in 2018, four sporting and his time and players from traveller backgrounds temporarily quit the sport, citing a series of racial slurs during games and referees' failure to take them seriously. Janis Zinedine Bulmel, a Dubliner, uh, was racially abused by an opponent during a game in the Leinster Senior League. The referee took no action during the game. But Yanis says he's, exper he's been experiencing racism for over 12 years on the pitch. Boydou Sahe, the Westmead GA player, recently spoke up during uh, his experiences of racism and, and referenced the uh, proliferation of, of sly comments. And Gina Akpe Moses uh, stated that after she completed getting lots of, lots of medals, people said to her, well, why do we have her? She's not Irish. But many of these people, I think, who are speaking out uh, they're young adults, uh, but what I worry about is the kids all across the country who are thinking of joining a team, thinking of joining a sport. Maybe they're getting hassle in their sport already. Maybe they're thinking about leaving their sport because of racism, because of sly comments. Uh, and what I would say to those children, and I would ask the ministers to maybe comment as well, is I'd ask you to, to tell someone, tell a friend, tell a parent, tell a coach or, or tell a teacher, and I would say to coaches and clubs across the country, check in with your kids, ask them how they've been getting hassle, ask them how they've been getting sly comments. And I'd also ask the clubs not just to look at who is in your club, but who's, who's not in your club. Look around your community and ask who in the community is not part of this club and why are they not part of it? Who doesn't feel comfortable to approach the club? Who's never been asked? to join the club? Who's afraid to ask? Who never thought of asking? And these are the questions that we can and should ask, not just in relation to ethnicity, I think, but also very much in relation to gender, and women's and girls' participation in sport, people with disabilities and people with different sexual orientations. I suppose and I highlight this issue not just to point out the things that are wrong and that should be better, but I highlight the broader issue of inclusion in this session on sport, because sport and team sport in particular, if done properly and inclusively, has enormous potential to break down barriers, help people feel they belong, help people feel they are valued and, and are a part of the community. Um, so I'd just like to ask, ask the ministers, in terms of the national sports policy as well, what measures are being implemented to help kids in these situations uh, to upskill coaches and, and, and leaders and trainers into a position where they can intervene and, and deal with these kind of things that happen on the pitches and the various sports grounds on a regular basis.